Welcome to Life on Two Wheels. In this episode, it's my pleasure to offer you a candid conversation with none other than the host of Scooter and the Sticks, Steve Williams. Enjoy. So, so uh, uh, I promised I would only have one question for you. So, so the question is, why did you start blogging? That's an interesting question. Because I, I know why I, I know why I started. I, I, I thought I was doing a public service because I had benefited from other people's blogs. But when, when, I, when, I, when I first heard about blogging, and I thought to myself, who in their right mind would do that? And it was a housewife in Quebec City or something. She was writing this blog about what she did every day and picking up her kids from school. I said, why would anybody write a blog? And why would anybody read it? Right? And then in the fullness of time, I find myself blogging, which I find kind of funny, right? So I, I know what my motivation is, but I'm curious about what your motivation was. Well, when I started, it was really a, an exercise for my job. We were interested in what kind of time commitment we would have to make to run a blog for Penn State's College of Ag Sciences. Yeah. And it sort of fell within my, my job, and I said, well... I'll give it a whirl and I'll see what it takes to write right. posts and, and, and put them together. And I can remember sitting in the living room with my wife and like having blogger open and what, what should I call this blog? And she said, and I just bought a Vespa and she said, why don't you call it Scooter and the Sticks? And uh, I'm like, oh, okay, I can write about the Vespa. So I, I was just using that as fodder for for this experiment. And I was trying to, you know, make one photograph and write some little paragraph and see how much time it took. And over time, what I found was something different. You know, we found out for work, yeah, we could do this if you got to focus. But blogging for me sort of developed over time that I found that uh, the process of writing and reflecting on my experiences while I was riding was helpful in a lot of different ways. It helped me better appreciate what I was doing. And uh, it, uh, somewhere along the line, I made a commitment, I'm going to keep doing this. And it was like this carrot and stick I needed to keep working uh, personally. Because, you know, as a photographer professionally, you're always working for someone else. You're a hard gun. You're you're following someone else's dream and you know making pictures for them. But this pushed me to do something for myself. And riding provided a stimulus to just get the camera up because I loved riding, and, and I felt like a kid again. I hadn't had so much fun since I was little, and riding the Vespa was just perfect. So it all sort of came together over time as an audience developed, and that was sort of unexpected because I wasn't really looking for an audience, but all of a sudden some other like-minded person, you know, puts a comment, and I realized there are other people out there doing this, and I, I began to uh, think much like you did, is there some benefit to other people? And, and for me, it you know, there were motorcycle blogs out there, not many scooter blogs, and I realized that uh, you could have a scooter and it was okay and it wasn't a toy and it wasn't this urban hipster thing, that it could be something you could seriously ride and have little adventures. So I, 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 I think that's where I, I began and it, over time, it really has become something not so much about giving back as much as it is helping me understand why I do some of the things I do and hopefully that will help someone else on their own sort of exploration. You've, you've got a very broad audience, right? You, you appeal to uh, uh, many more people than, uh, than motorcyclists. If, if, I, if I, I read the, the comments on your, on your blog correctly and your, your, uh, your blog is much more metaphysical than uh, mine is. I think M mine was very technically oriented. Like, how do you how do you commute? How do you how do you, how do you reconcile uh, having to work in a suit 
and and wearing all this motorcycle gear to work and what happens if, how happens if it's pouring rain and how do you make sure people aren't running into you and busy urban traffic and stuff like that whereas i i think your your um your your blog was always more metaphysical and i think that's probably the photographer in you and the, the thing that, the thing that amazed me is that you you have this ability to take the same picture over and over and over and over again and yet no two are alike and uh, you, you've got like this this palette, which is the, the the Pennsylvania hills and so on, the sticks, and 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 the same Vespa all these years, and yet every single photograph is is kind of fresh. And I think that's where the, that's where the art is. And I think you're tremendously tremendously successful at that, and uh, I think that attracts people to your work. And I think your the your, the, the metaphysical aspect. Of, of writing for you and, and what it means in terms of freeing your mind and, 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 and having that artistic intent, yeah, I think is what drives people to, to your blog. Do, do you kind of agree with that assessment? Or I do. I, th I think that uh, you know, I can look at, at the people that follow my blog and, and they're riders first. The scooter is incidental to it in a lot of cases. I mean, I certainly have a lot of scooter riders who are looking for maybe validation or support or understanding, but for the most part, I tend to see my followers as riders first, and they're people who either use whatever they're riding to explore their life, to explore the world, to have adventures, and... You know, what I'm writing just sort of echoes some of the things they experience or they feel. The only kind of technical stuff that comes up in my blog may be about riding in the winter. And I certainly have attracted some attention because I ride year-round and through the snow and I've been in, you know, sort of dicey situations. So some people are just, I think, attracted to that, like they may be to an accident ready to happen. As, <laughs> yeah. far, as far as photography though, it, it's, it, I'm amazed too that after all these years, I've been blogging since 2005 and I've been photographing Vespas and there are thousands and thousands of pictures of the Vespa on my blog and I haven't tired of photographing it and uh, I'm amazed how often it you know, there are certain things that it does look similar. There are certain <laughs> angles of view that look better than others. And I smack myself sometimes say, you know, you need to try something different and not just what works. But I think what I do vary is, is sort of the view of the landscape, the weather, the time of day, things like that. But um, you, also, you also have an act for photographing the Vest book from, from, a, from a, a kind of a... Uh, straight on, slightly off center angle that that captures the volumes of the of the design really really well and makes it look good. Vespa should be paying you I, a large I, amount of money. I always think about uh, in my head. I'm like I'm trying to make a heroic image of the Vespa and. In, in a country, in a in a country where most people call them mopeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I call it a moped when it it uh, suits my needs to park somewhere where only mopeds can park. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, like any photographer will tell you, whether you're photographing people or anything else, there are certain points of view that look stronger than others, and the, the Vespa is no different. Um, but I've seen some really good photographs of Vespa that I have not attempted because there are angles of view that I, I just don't strike me. And so there's plenty of turf for me to explore yet. But I try to, I guess if I had to distill it down, like why am I taking these pictures or, or doing these things? I, I feel I'm, I'm trying to say something about you don't have to have a lot of power you don't have to have a big motorcycle. You don't have to go real fast to have really genuine, exhilarating adventures. And I think there's a real advantage in that sort of slow travel aspect of riding that you can do it a lot. You know, some of these guys that 
ride around the world or ride across the country. You can only do that so often. It's sort of like having a sailboat and you live in central Pennsylvania, but your boat's in Annapolis or your boat's up in one of the Great Lakes or your boat's, you know, down in Norfolk. You can't sail very often. With right. the Vespa, I can ride every day, whether it's a ride to work or whether it was a ride, you know, like we did today. And it can be a real adventure. And I don't have to go 90 miles an hour to get somewhere, or I don't have to, you know, drive for three days straight to get for someone or someplace I want to explore. Right. Now, would I like to do that? Yeah, someday if I if the opportunity presents itself and I can ride across country, I, I wouldn't. But mind it takes you know we we all have our we all have our our kind of our our modes of being right, and they're all different. And I, and I think of uh, of Stephanie Yu, you know, who traveled to, through all all fifty. Uh, not all 50 states, but uh, all lower 48, and then recently she did Alaska, so she's up at 49. I don't think she's done Hawaii yet. Um, but you, uh, I had asked her a question at one point, like, what's the end of the road? Like, wh like, like I asked her, what happens when you get to her? Her target at that time was Lubeck, Maine, right, the fourth, the fourth corner of the U.S. And I said, well, what happens when you get to Lubeck? You know, and she said, it's no big deal. I'm just going to continue riding. But, but I think that, and she has, but it, it's not quite the same as when you've got this 48-state this four-corner target and all of a sudden you kind of get to the end of it. The, the, nice thing about, the, the nice thing about your environment is that you got to the, you, you, you've never gotten to the end of it. And, and a lot of people would have, would have been exhausted. You know, they would have exhausted their creativity after like two years, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think it's the essence of your artistic expression because it's inexhaustible, right? It's always the woods, it's always the Vespa, and, and it's, it's kind of inexhaustible. It's, it's, it's a little bit like, a, like a, a, some modern artists, you know, they, their whole career, they only, they only painted vertical color bars. You know, sometimes they were wider, sometimes they're narrower, and so on, right? But but it's it's, it's like it, it, the art is inexhaustible. I think. I'm not sure whether it's inexhaustible, but it hasn't exhausted yet. And you know, I don't see an end to the writing, other than if it's not fun anymore, then I wouldn't do it. But as, as far as photography, I haven't reached the end. And some people have asked, you know, like what you're doing now, making video blogs. I've made a few videos over the years and I find them really difficult and really challenging because with a photograph I'm like just collecting evidence on a ride and I can look at them afterwards and remember what happened and what I was doing and I can piece together something. A video has to be planned in much more detail, at least the kind I made and uh, that's time consuming and, and uncomfortable at this point. Will I ever make one? Yeah, probably will, but I've, I've attempted, I have a ton of video just sitting there like, uh, but um, yeah, as a creative project, the blog has been really rewarding. It, it was therapeutic. It's helped motivate me to continue working uh, I went to art school, you know, as an adult to get an MFA, and I had a big project photographing my wife for years, you know, because I was going part-time, and I think I was in school for six years, and I made thousands and thousands of photographs of my wife as part of this project, documenting her life, you know, following her into medical procedures in places that you know, a lot of people would be like, oh, you can't take my picture in there. And she, she became comfortable with the camera always being there. Right. And when I graduated and had an MFA show and that project was done, um, I was sort of adrift and looking for some creative outlet. And by chance, I stumbled on photographing the Vespa. And... Uh, it hasn't ended yet. And well, I, 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 I don't think it'll ever end. And, uh, you know, you've got a very, very loyal following. I'm certainly one of your loyal followers. And, uh, 
and I hope to do that for uh, many, many years to come. So I want to thank you very much, Steve. It's uh, very late, and uh, <laughs> we've had an exhausting day. We've got sore butts. I want to thank you for uh, taking me into the uh, Pennsylvania woods, and it was a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable experience. Well, yeah, I, I wished we had fog in the morning and maybe a little bit of rain here and there. It could vary a bit, but uh, yeah, it was, it was nice. I wish we had more time. I don't know if you saw when we were coming out of Renovo, you could see that white concrete structure way on top of the mountain. That was higher view. And uh, it has a spectacular view, but it, it's like 30 minutes to wind your way up the mountain right. to get there and we're in a rush. But... Yeah, I mean, you, you do some exceptional riding compared to I do. A lot of miles, a lot of movement, and you're the real uh, adventurer. And I know you had uh, on that card you gave me, Explorer, but I, I have something I wanted to give to you. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, you know, I've had this for a long time, but it's just like not me. But I thought maybe, maybe oh, for this heaven's would, sake. would go on, on yours. It's... I always thought it was sort of an interesting looking uh, <laughs> patch. And, right. Uh, <laughs> the uh, I'm not sure which camera which camera is picking this up. Certainly not that one. But I guess I guess that camera picks it up. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it it, it kind of does. And I'll I'll just put a poke uh, a picture on the. Uh, oh, that's really really cool. Yeah, I figured if. It would just sit in a drawer forever until I died and someone would throw it away, but I thought you could hold it for a while, maybe use it or pass it on to someone else. You know, that, that's, uh, a that's, riding pirate. that's uh, You're a gentle riding gentleman. I saw you had the little mustache on your headlight. Now you can have a, <laughs> be a pirate too. And, it, and it's funny because I, when I was in St. John's the first time in 2009, I picked up this baseball, baseball cap and so it's got a skull and crossbones on it, and it says the beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> and I wore that to, uh, I, I wore that constantly, and I wore it down to Florida. And my brother-in-law saw that, and he says, "Oh, I have to have that. I, I have to have that." So I said, "Chuck, it's yours." And I gave it to him, and uh, he has this huge collection of hats, like baseball caps that he gets as you know swag from conferences and stuff. So he says, take your pick. So I, I, I found one that's a dragon. I was born in the year of the dragon, so I have this dragon hat. And then when I was back in St. John's, I thought, I could, I, it's the only place I've ever seen that hat. i got to get another hat. So this goes perfectly with, uh, with my pirate theme. That is fantastic. Steve, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice, uh, a good night's sleep, I guess, is really what you need at this point. Yeah, we'll have a safe trip back to Canada. Thank you very much. That's a wrap for another episode of Life on Two Wheels. Don't forget to click to like this video, click to subscribe, and in the show notes you'll find a link to the Life on Two Wheels blog where you'll find the touring guide, the gear guide, and so much more. See you soon on Life on Two Wheels.